Greetings, as always, traveler. You may get a little tired of me wishing you these uh, warmest of greetings, but it is something that is very important to me. Denizens of Humblewood, those who have traveled a great many miles, those who were born here, both the bird and humble folk alike, I say to you the same thing. Welcome, friend. For everyone is equal at this table. Your last visit here was intense, to say the least. Uh, most of our party, one of which stayed behind in order to do some research about the coming conflict, um, were left as a party of three with the assistance of the Lumen named Tevor. Uh, you will become well acquainted uh, with both Tevor and his compatriot, the Gallus Havel, uh, being both a very colorful pair, one shy beyond recognition and the other comparatively, contrastingly, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you are heard True. of, you are made aware of this creature out in the scorched grove that needed to be dealt with for it was threatening the lives of many people. So Tevor, clearly having binds to the situation, traveled with the party. A great battle ensued with a creature known as the Ash Snake, a huge creature capable of swallowing even the likes of Baldric whole. But it was bested. However, very, very briefly after, multitudes of the, of the beasts rose up from the ashes and a huge, enormous, impossibly vast giant of molten lava sprang forth from the ground. An intense chase scene later. Tevor renewed and barely any of you making it out with your lives and a little bit of a compensation from both Havel for bringing his friend back alive and the Birdfoot Council preparing you for these uh, to come adventures. You arrive back at the same time, Niffy attempting to going to reconnect with her party and then the rest of you running for your lives. Um, <laughs> you make the Birdfoot Council aware of what is happening and all of these awards are bestowed upon you. It becomes very apparent that the molten giant has gone back to its some slumbering place. The uh, mages and wise people of Alderheart, Niffy herself leaning in her own expertise, deducing that the creature is somewhat tied to the area. So while, of course, parts of the forest are burning, you aren't in as quite as immediate of a threat as you found yourself a day ago. We bring you back to reconnect uh, in the canopy market of Alderheart. And we begin. Um, I know I know that uh, I would like to buy another longbow uh, okay. as mine was destroyed. Uh, we don't, it, and, you know, you can roleplay it if you'd like, but you don't have to. No. Uh, I just, I, uh, how, much, how much would that run me plus 20 arrows? That's going to be, I need to take it handy dandy look at my PHP. <laughs> yes, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm holding. I'm on. I'm holding on to the purse of 500 gold that we got, and I'm basically. Yeah. Well, it's not we're a just, purse. We're just... It's a. Uh, the 500 gold is specifically for um, things that would assist you in like the uh, the effort. Oh, is it like just credit? It's, it's like it's a, a credit. credit. It's a. Uh, oh, okay, cool. It's a piece cool. of parchment stamped with the seal of Elderheart. Cool, cool. Um, it's, it's a requisition I'll... slip. I, I'll hold on to that, and I, I assume that, I mean, that we would want to go around and just everyone go ahead and grab everything that we think we might need and, yes. and just be like, you want to see my ID? Boom, there it is. Yeah, you know, you want to see how much I got? Boom, there it is. And For just some of do these that purchases, much. if they're a little more outlandish, you'll have to explain yourself. Yes. But um, you'll find what you need pretty easy to get. The longbow is 50 gold pieces. Okay, I'll cross it. Um... I, I don't suppose there's uh, anything that could make me a little less flammable. Anything <laughs> less. Yeah, that'd be a good thing to look for. Some cover for from a uh, fire. 
<laughs> Do they make yeah. fire retardant cloaks? <laughs> you have or... a few options. Mm -hmm. Um, for things such as those, you could you could see if Eliza has anything in stock that might help with some fire resistance, or alternatively, you could um seek out the mag the alchemical stylings of Susan. Yeah, Susan. I was gonna Ooh, say. Yeah, she we, has, should, uh, we should we should pay her a market. We can stop by Definitely. both of them. <clears throat> As far as mundane uh, stuff, that's all I wanted to get myself was just the bow. So we can oh. stop by the the magic stuff too, and I'm I'm fine with with what I already got. So let's let's go ahead and yeah, why not both? Yeah. Um, why not both? no dose. <laughs> Suzanne, my darling. <laughs> oh my god. Uh. So we can we can pop over to Susan's, I guess. Yes, of if, course. Oh, cool. Yeah. So. Ding a ling a ling a ling. <laughs> you happen upon. Uh, she's found herself a little nice place for her lower in the trees, like in the uh, market area. Um, <laughs> the surroundings aren't entirely dissimilar to uh, her abode back in the swamp. You hear the chittering of uh, normal. Oh, no. <laughs> normal is someone at the door. <laughs> Who is it? It's us. It's <gasps> your friends. You hear it. <laughs> Crashing. <laughs> <laughs> As she runs and slams into the door, and you hear this like huge, like this unlocking sound, followed by Do you want to tell him or sound. Should I? <laughs> and she opens oh, the door. Oh, green ham! I think Susan later. knocked over your camera in excitement. Yeah. I know she did, that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> too oh, much normal. excitement. Too fast. Too furious. <laughs> Son of a bitch! I am orange! <laughs> How's that for immersion? Susan, here, let me help! <laughs> oh. We seem to have been beset by a blinding spell. <laughs> Did she knock over a potion and just blind oh, us all? <laughs> I think that's what happened. It's not going away is the problem. <laughs> Niffy. Winter. Winter, I can't see. Hey. Oh my gosh. Oh. Anywho. Oh. That was beautiful. Thank you. And it was entirely planned. <laughs> we have fun here. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Hello, Susan. Ten lo I didn't know it was happening, so I'm like, damn, they find this very funny. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I do love me some Susan and Normal, though. My next favorite sitcom. I want to run up to Normal and just give him a hug. Normal, as you know, oh. is almost as big as you are. I was going to say. Yeah. Gonna His antennas themselves are definitely it. taller than you, and he just chitters away happily. Um, you have some uh, so, um, I don't know if you've heard the news, but there's, um, a giant creature out there. Um, we might be able to use your help if you've got any magic items that might help us in the, in the fight ahead. Oh, dear. Yes, come, come on, come on, come on, come on. You see her Anything? usual pot of crap. <laughs> this, like, g green glowing liquid that smells faintly of asparagus? Mm. Mm. You're not sure you want to know. Nope. <laughs> Probably not. Um, we'll we'll just skip that one. Um, so um, <laughs> um, I think I'm pretty all right for for the most part. I'm not much of a of a magic user. So, um, uh, Winter, uh, Niffy, do. You... I suppose um, anything you have that is uh, would help us against fire would be amazing or well, as somewhere. you know i would of course be more than willing to actually part with any of these for free if you bring me the reagents but 
But I do have something. I have an idea. It's over here. Normal, pass me the salt. Uh, you see Normal, like, skitter away and pass this little, like, sack of salt. And she tastes a little taste. <laughs> From the cauldron. For flavor. Anyway! <laughs> Uh, she looks up and she rifles through like her cabinet looking for all she can and you she pulls out this clear vial This should do nicely She hurries on to it potion of resistance hmm. Versatile you pick a damage type you pick a specific source of damage and poof, Resisted That's very handy How uh, many um do you have in stock? I only have two at the moment. 100 gold pieces each, but if you bring me the ingredients, I'd be more than happy to make them myself. What are the ingredients? Uh, of course, anything yeah. we can do to help. Well, it requires a little bit of your uh, previous exploits. I remember. The person was I need a small mirror, which I have. And residue from shifting slime. Ah. Oh. Right. Mm. Although, I'm more than happy to try and crank out a few more of them for you if you pay me in advance. Girls gotta Certainly. eat! Um. Oh, well, of course. I'll turn to the rest of the group and be like, I know we have, like, this piece of paper for credit but i mean i've i've got some gems i think i just give her some actual gold i mean she's a friend I, you know she, we yeah. don't need to give her credit mm -hmm. let's and i'll, I'll dig I, through and I'd i think okay if, i think i have i think i have uh some gems that equal 200 gold i believe you do and i i'll i'll turn to the group and be like I'm not much for fashion anyway. So I'll, I'll turn to Susan and be like, Susan, if this is all right, we'll be happy to trade you these, you know, giving her the whole the whole thing of gems. Deal. And she like yanks <laughs> it away from you and just like shoves the potions. I do also offer fortunes. Oh, how much are you charging for those? We'll say the first one's on me. Mm. Well, Can't I say I'm not curious. Mm -hmm. You have piqued my fancy, dear Susan. Sure. Sounds fun. Oh then no, a... guys. Maybe we should Then one fortune it is! Alright, alright. Glad I got... It's funny you say that. I was just preparing such a spell. She walks around, tottering, like, <clears throat> sees a few vials on the shelf and just tosses the whole fucking thing into the potion, into the big, like, <laughs> Grit gets this hilariously sized, comically sized spoon and starts, gets up on this little step stool and starts stirring as best she can, <laughs> muttering I'm something up. under her breath. And you, you hear, like, the distortion in her voice. Hmm. Asparagus? <laughs> <laughs> no, normal, don't eat that! <clears throat> I see... She like inhales the vapors and you see like some vague images in the smoke above the cauldron. A fire. Great emblazoned scholars. Knowledge of sorts. A great confrontation. A necromancer. Oh no! <laughs> Sorry, that's my that's my lunch. <laughs> a necromancer. 
necromancer? Question mark, question mark on the necromancer. Never conjure where you eat. And then... A final battle. Flames threatening to engulf the entirety of the forest. And then it's dark after that. But there is hope. A chance. Of recovery. Hmm. The distortion goes away and the fumes start to die down along with the magical images. Hopefully that means something to you. Uh, well, a scholar's thing does. Because yeah. after this, because I really wanted to come here and see you, um, oh. <laughs> I was going to suggest that we go to the avium. Uh, magic school here. Oh. To I couldn't find anything at the uh, any of the libraries or anywhere else, but I think that the ABM might have something. Yeah, we can try that. I guess it's with your fancy new title, you might be able to uh, pull some strings to get some info that you need. True. I'm also a wizard, so magic. that definitely helps. <laughs> <laughs> All right, perfect. Well, um, so uh, we might want—I don't know about you guys—we have so we have two of those potions now. Maybe how long does it normally take you to? Um, I guess it depends on whether or not we want to spend some time and go back and collect some slime, or um, we mean maybe we can come back if we can't find anything else to spend our credit on. Uh, we can order some more of those potions. Uh, point of clarity, DM. Was that near Winnowing Reach that we got? Yes. The Mockton mm -hmm. Caverns were just outside yeah. of Winnowing Reach. So that was yeah. a couple a days, days right? Yeah. 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 Um, okay. So I guess we can sit on that and um, see what else we can find. Well, out. I suppose. What do you think, Normal? Yes, but you don't think that certainly. It is an idea. <gasps> Never mind. Um. <laughs> okay. Uh, um. Who? Who? What? When? Did what did he? Um. Did, what did? Oh, no. what did the? Oh, Jim. <laughs> the voices. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um. Uh, I'm kidding, Susan. I'm kidding. It's nothing so weird. Norma was just talking to me. He's quite the chatterbox. I can tell. It's great. Well, thank you so much, Susan. You've been a big help. Um, we might stop by later. Um, Please don't do. worry if we. Me and your little cat friend are stopping by for tea a little later. Oh, yes. How is. How is. Um. Eliza doing? Acclimating quite well to the space, all things considered. Business is booming. <clears throat> Actually thinking of stopping by, seeing if she has anything that might help us, so. Who knows? Yeah. Well, if we come across any unnatural creatures that have bits that might be interesting to you, I'm sure you'll be the first person that we, we think of to deliver said bits. I do like bits. <laughs> all right, well. Thank you, um, Susan. As Thank always, you, dear, be careful. You too. I Have promise. fun destroying the giant. <laughs> and there she goes. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, she, she, she took leaving for serious. Yeah. <laughs> we, we didn't mean it literally. <laughs> Lindsay, the session's not over yet. We're not just having one and conversation and then we're done. Come on. So, um, I guess we'll we'll go to see Eliza and and basically tell her the same thing. We'll just go through the spiel, you know. The giants in the sky, and then you <gasps> know, all that don't other you stuff. Even right now with me. Anyway, <laughs> for for the sake of brevity, Eliza greets you the same, and she offers you run of the house. Okay. As far as things to purchase goes. 
would require a little bit of a rolling of the dice. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Rolling of the dice. And what and what's uh, what's Eliza's specialty again? Like um Magical items. If if I wanted to have Ooh. something enchanted that I have, is that something she could do or is that might be more of Susan's purview? Like if I have like my normal like I had just to have a regular sword if I want to see if I can do anything to it. There is it's not Eli Eliza procures items and gets them here. She okay. herself is not a mage. Um, per se. However, the retail outlet. Yeah, there isn't really any place <laughs> we like go that to around the here. Avium, maybe. The Avium most oh, likely yeah. would have a wizard or an enchanter or of some renown there. Okay, cool. Good to know. Well, I still want to look around. I want to go I there. Cool magic. I still yeah, what, what kind of cool magic shit she's got? Yeah. Uh. Just for curiosity's sake, why not? You yeah. see, um, all manner of adventuring goods, as always, in Eliza's uh, stock. You see as well, um... Let's roll some dice. Yeah. You see a, a token with a ram's head on it that's particularly nice looking. A deed to a house in Bracken Mill for 500 gold, if that at all interests you. Um, and as far oh. as the magical side mm -hmm. goes... Party house. Party, party house. house. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So, listen. Oh, no. <laughs> why did you buy a house? Um, okay, so here. This is, this is why this goes on. <laughs> Hear me out. This um, is what I need for the battle. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Because I need a place to go when this inevitably blows up in our face. Anyway. Backup plan. <laughs> you see um, Illurin boots, which is the equivalent of like boots of elven kind. And these really like Ooh. nicely put together boots. You see some bracers of archery. And you also see a very ornate <laughs> staff up. in the shape of a python's head. Ooh. Oh. <clears throat> what do the bracers of archery do? They give you plus bonuses to ranged attacks, I believe. <laughs> and how much is that running for? Oh, I was like, lean down to lean down to Rook and be like, "Son, tell the nice lady what you'd like." <laughs> <laughs> Would it be too weird for me to get the snaky staff? Why would it be weird? Because I am a mouse. It's true. You would be a badass mouse, even more. Confronting your fears, <laughs> turning, <laughs> turning your fear against the enemy, just like Batman. That is so niffy. <laughs> I am the knight. But, you know. <laughs> well, the way this. Okay, okay so just like, I could have Eliza like role play this out to you, but I'm not going to because we have shit to do. Nah. The Braces yes. of Archery, um, you have proficiency with Longbow and Shortbow, and you gain a plus two bonus to damage rolls on ranged attacks made with such weapons. With Longbows with and Shortbows. Longbow. Damn it! Okay, never mind. Uh, Staff of the Python. You can speak staff's command word, throw the staff on the ground within 10 feet of you, and it becomes a giant constrictor snake under your control. Act on its own initiative count. By using a bonus action, you return the staff to its normal form. On your turn, you can mentally command the snake if it is within six feet of, 60 feet of you and you aren't incapacitated. Uh, if it reduces zero hit points, it dies and reverts to its staff form. Okay, so you become Moses. Good. The staff then shatters and is destroyed. <laughs> Oh, so if it dies, it actually dies. If dies. the snake reverts to the staff form before losing all its hit points, it regains all of them. Oh, yeah. Okay. So yeah, so you become Moses. Snakey staff. You want the staff? How much is a snakey stack staff, staff. Yeah. That's staff. 500 gold pieces and it requires attunement. Oof. Oh, it's Oof. only by... I don't care. <clears throat> um, Sad I mean, face. we no. could use our coupon. No, it's not... Important. It's for funsies. <laughs> it's not important. Uh, funsies. Well, if you, if you think you need it, then, it, I mean, I don't I'll... need it. I can live without it. Are, are you sure? Oh wait! Any... I also believe Eliza offers you a ten percent discount. <gasps> um, because yeah. you helped, you gold. saved her life. Yes, yeah, so it's like what four hundred and fifty. Yeah. Yeah, four fifty. Okay. I don't know. That's like a lot of our gold, and we should be spending it wisely on things yeah. that are important. We'll keep would, that in mind, though. How much were the boots? I do, 
the boots, mm -hmm. those are 200 gold. Would that be a that's, benefit to anyone? That's, that's more of a... It would be a benefit for me, but like, would Rooker... I mean, you're already pretty pretty sneaky and hasted. Yeah, I'm already and stuff, pretty so. sneaky, and I already have, I already have the boots of speed. Oh, okay. So. Yeah, mm. I have the boots of speed, so... I don't use a bow, so it would All not benefit All the boots of Elvenkind do is you make no sound when you step, regardless of the surface, and you advantage on dexterity stealth checks. Oh, okay. That's yeah, fine. and... That would be beneficial. I'm good on stuff. Oh. <laughs> what? Yeah. How, how's your dexterity, Niffy? What's? Um, my dex is pretty good. <laughs> like, it's, if you had to put a number on it, you it's know, like, with a plus it's or like something. Average. <laughs> it's like average. Mine's pretty decent. My dex is pretty decent. I don't mind getting it for you, but this will be your birthday present. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. DM um, question. DM answer. Can we just like say at some point we stop at like a regular place so I can refill my crossbow bolts? All you two can do of that them here. that I used. Oh, cool! I just need two. Like yeah, literally just two crossbow bolts. Nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll we'll give we'll give uh, unless anyone else needs anything. That's, I mean, sorry, I would be all right. That's, that's one gold piece. Oh, that's fine. Okay. We got I'll it. just I'll just pair. Cool. Give give uh, Eliza, you know, Libby's it is good to see you. Oh. Goodbye. And yeah, then... pretty much. Do you buy the staff or no? No. Okay. No. It might not be here when you return. That's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're not helping. <laughs> but don't you just love no, the help. image of the mouse with the fucking python staff at her command? I know, right? Oh, yeah. She she just, know. just throws it at someone. They're like, you what know, is this? And then, but if he's you know, the responsibleness. You know. If the giant constrictor snake is considered huge, you could use oh, it as a mount. <sighs> That's right, I'm slapping the coupon down on the counter. Large. I think it's considered large. I'm slapping I, the coupon I, on the I, counter. Yeah, like, I can. I could do, write do it. You think, do you think maybe this will be? Uh, I, I, I don't know. She really does like it, but I think I like her liking it more. So I'm. <laughs> I love we, the image. Can we put a bow on it and and maybe a little too <laughs> nifty? Ah, you're looking from... for our for our gifting special. Now what I can do for the gifting <laughs> pack. No, I'm kidding, yeah. <laughs> Eliza exuberantly accommodates you, just like, yes, of course, here you go! And like basically to put you in your hands. Nice little bow on top. Um, and I believe that eats through 450 gold of your value. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We're Money done. Well spent. Yeah. Money well spent. Money well spent. You yep. You're going to be traveling a lot, Niffy, and you need some extra protection while on the road, let alone, you know, when we're battling. So this, I feel like, is more and than you know, a dope -ass justified. justified. Yep. Niffy's just looking up at you guys with the big round eyes that look like they're about to cry. She's just so fucking happy. <laughs> just She's clutching put her, her Put an arm around around Winter and, and Rooker and just be like, it makes her happy. <laughs> that makes me happy. <laughs> It's like Money now remember good. now remember Niffy, it's a lot of responsibility to have a staff. You have to feed it, you have to clean up <laughs> after it. <laughs> this one in particular, anyway. Oh now, my god! Hurt, make sure to return it so it doesn't die on you. <laughs> to the avium. To the avium. It's now let's go look for some books. crafted wooden staff. It's like mahogany. Oh Sweet my god! And ornate and wonderfully detailed <laughs> and easily the size of three of you. <laughs> oh my gosh! This I love it. Two and a half of you. So in tall grass, in tall grass, just it just looks like a staff walking yeah, through. Snake form. <laughs> just the staff or in snake form? It's the that staff. big. The staff. Fuck. It's the dorsal fin of the shark from Jaws. Like, <laughs> what is that? Is. The snake head just like. <laughs> Dunna. Pretty much. You are left oh to your God. own devices. To the avium? To the avium! To the library! To the avium! To the library! 
There's a map! <laughs> it's a magic school, not a library. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it does have an intensely huge library, which is where you would be doing your study. Yes. Now, you do have a few um, modes of travel here. You can either take the long way around, which is pretty relatively safe, but it's have to like go, or go around a few known, like band, previously known banded locations and stays out of the way, and it's pretty generally safe. Or, and that's a three days travel. Or, okay, you can cut your travel time by a day and cut through a very specific, very overgrown, very dangerous part of forest. Hmm. You are not particularly pressed for time. The the aspect of the large fire creature is, while yes, awake and burning shit, it was kind of already doing that before you dealt met it. Uh So you aren't in any new amount of immediate peril as you were before, if that helps your decision at all. I'm definitely more inclined to take the long way around. Okay. Shame. Yeah. I vote yeah. for this the long and winding road. Sweet. Well, agreement. Woohoo. <laughs> Good. This is very easy, as opposed to Janice Argon. <laughs> <laughs> We're all pretty agreeable characters. Yeah. I, like I was going to say, mean, like, do whatever you would like. Want to, whereas I mean, Janice is like, like, like a hodgepodge of different personalities. <laughs> chaotic again. personalities. So many chaotic personalities. All right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> It's a relatively beautifully speaking uh, road that winds very hardcore. (laughs) Uh, Large trees, the usual sort of things that you see in the Humblewood. Um, And you can see far off in the distance about two days in. Unless, of course, there's something that needs to happen over these days. Yes? Um, Can I? I want to practice using my staff of the python. Over one night. It's writing it. You take time, uh, especially trying to like get to where you want to go. I'm gonna need you to make an animal handling check. Shit. You, you um, with all of your mousy might, you slam it and stick it into the ground. It's you speak the command word, and it um, uh, it stiffens, and almost like shedding its skin falls out of the form that it was in still maintaining it's like dark brown coloring and its eyes are still the color of uh like this intense uh green they look down at you but not menacingly it is large and does nothing without your commanding it to do so I rolled a 13. A 13? You decide to practice um, riding the snake around. Um, I imagine if he's one of those people that would eventually name it. Please. Please. Yeah. Please. You don't have to now. <laughs> but, the- <laughs> but this is where I'm coming from. It's a bit of a mess. Like riding a bike for the first time. You fall off. Snake catches you sometimes. <clears throat> You're figuring it out. It's a work in progress. What? Rodney. <laughs> Rodney. Oh my fucking god. I hate you so much. Rodney What's his name? the Python. <gasps> Rodney the Python. Why did I get But also this? because he's a staff. He's Rodney. a staff. Like a rod. Yeah, it's funny. Oh. Anyway. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Julian's <laughs> dying so on the side. I see it in his it eyes. Is fine. That's what I uh, sign up for this fucking game. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, can I can I attune to my feather helm and uh, I'd also like to whittle into my new bow its name, which is Wrath of Altus. Ooh, Ooh. edgy man, edgy, edgy boy. Okay. <laughs> Anything else over these nights? When I practice and I finally name him, 
I and, and I finally get it my last time. I want to go do the staff thing and be like, Rodney, I choose you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yes. I was really hoping. Who's that magical equipment? Hey, yeah, it's Rodney. Come on, you gotta recall him before he fates. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. What Pokemon sound does he make? Rodney. 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 <laughs> Julian is so dead. Sneaky dumb. snack. Amaranthine, give me strength. <laughs> anyway. <So> <laughs> That's the only thing I want to do after that glorious yes is just as we're traveling every night I'm gonna start I'm writing a, a song um, trying to figure out kind of like a kind of a sad but also kind of like hopefully heroic kind of ballad of the Scorched Grove kind of deal so it's a work in progress like a as long you know work in progress Meet. name to be determined cool And then when you're done writing the lyrics, send it to me and I'll, I'll do it. Oh shit, I'm bad at lyrics. Holy crap, oh, but I know. <laughs> I'll turn, as she's like trying to hum to herself and think of something. I can, I can help you out if you actually want to write it. Well, we'll would, get to that, we'll get to that. I'll turn to Rooker and be like, oh, she's really good at this. You know, this would be a good song too. Uh, I guess, you know, the long and winding road. I don't know, I, I can't think of anything. <laughs> <laughs> you go upon to the alien. Finally. Finally, you see it. It is this large uh, structure. Something like Alderheart, which is made out of like this ancient oak that is still growing. The avium is made out of like a petrified tree. It is awe-inspiring almost. You see uh, four gigantic circular stone platforms. Uh, floating alongside several towers and spires in the air above you. These structures slowly rotate around a leafless and branchless tree trunk made from solid stone. The trunk towers hundreds of feet high, and orbiting structures appear to connect to stone bridges with jet out of the trunk near its upper levels. You see two perch guards uh, uh, and watch posts above the entryway to this petrified trunk. They greet you, and moments later, a robed, bespeckled raptor uh, glides down and lands at your feet. He is wearing fine academic clothing. Um, and smiles at all of you, and particularly at Niffy. Like, um, I forgot, I forgot what your fucking title was. <laughs> I, I <laughs> the hubble liaison to the minute members. Ah, uh, yes. Um. Welcome, ev each and every one of you, to the avium. And might I suppose that this is the humble liaison? To the minute members of the Of course, yeah. of course. Apologies, ma'am. Yes, that is me. Um, then we have actually been made aware of your presence and have been expecting you for a few days now. Oh? Uh... My name is Reese Birchwalker. Can you spell the... Say the last name one more time, please? Birchwalker. Tree, it's the tree, Birch and then walker. Birch and Reese is R-H-Y-S. Um, and as I said, the dean is expecting you. Right this way. Um, Reese leads you um to the central gate. Reese is very odd. One of those hum one of those bird folk that doesn't seem really either masculine or feminine. <laughs> mm. So it's one of those things where you're also like, crap, what do I use? Oh, so he's like, you non-binary. Kind of. Yeah. 
waiting till you but hear you're what unsure. they are unsure. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> they them it is until proven otherwise. Yeah, exactly. Uh. Um They lead you to a large central gate. Which appears to be the only entrance into the entire avium. Um, they withdraw an amulet with the avium's crest on it, and it fold uh, and it folds out from their robe as they present it to the giant wooden double doors. After a brief moment, the same symbol etches itself in light across the entrance. Then, with a heavy creak, the doors begin to part feeling a large interior lounge. I look over to everyone else with like my eyebrows raised like fancy kind of deal. <laughs> a main desk sits near the far wall behind which a scribe is busy with tottering piles of paper. Several chairs and couches are situated around the circular tables throughout the room, which is lit comfortably by floating uh, razors containing magical flames. Portraits of wizened bird folk hang from the walls, each one wearing robes similar to those of your attendant. Hmm. <laughs> Behind the main desk is a spiral staircase that leads down and is flanked by a pair of large bird folk statues, one of which bears the likeness of a corvum whose portrait hangs from the west wall. Opposite the staircase, a circular platform rests on its own cylindrical alcove. Professor Birchwalker leads the leads uh, the lot of you onto a circular platform and utters this indescribable incantation, which causes the entire disc to rise from the ground and propel you upwards, sort of like a magical medieval elevator. Nice. Through the tree trunk. A few windows occasionally zip by on the way up, showing glimpses of the wood and just how high you are traveling, which is high. <laughs> yeah, I saw those eyes. Um, yeah. The platform stops halfway up the structure, and you find yourselves in an area next to the busy atrium. Following Professor Birchwalker, you arrive at the Dean's office. This posh, well uh, dressed is the only word I can describe it as for the room. A well dressed room. <laughs> Uh, complete with like gorgeous uh, blues and purples and greens um, and any color in between the spectrum you and your companions enter into the round office and is surrounded by windows on all sides through which several spires and large circular terrariums can be observed floating by <clears throat> The many tables inside the office are filled with disorganized piles of books. <laughs> um, and the desk is in a similar state of disorder. And a sable luma peeks up from under the books. <laughs> like, oh! Question, DM. Question. So, like, the window, so, like, we can see? You can like, see out. The and, like, There's a bunch of windows out. here. You can see out. Okay. Okay. Then, like, can we see, like... Like the ground floor and just like how like wow we're super high up or like the canopies of other trees around or yep. like you are you are above the canopy. Cool. Cool. <laughs> cool. cool. <laughs> yeah, no, you're uncomfortable. <laughs> this I is will fine. Be moving away from the windows. <laughs> oh, please, please excuse me. Oh, oh. Uh, as he, you see, like the stack of of books like almost fall over and he's like stops it um please excuse me i'm reviewing a few uh, hundred theses for my students excellent work but one does tend to lose track of time i am terribly sorry i am dean winsworth gabe winsworth it's a pleasure to meet you and he like hurries out from around his desk just like a lot of his like the drapes and things that he uses he himself is all manner of blues and purples and gorgeous uh, feathers and in a very nice, very scholarly uh, green robe with the atrium crest holding it together. Um, the, I... <coughs> and he pulls out this little, like, um... Oh god, I forgot what they call it. Handkerchief? Handkerchief? Little white square <coughs> and he's like... <coughs> 
Excuse me, I'm so sorry. <clears throat> anyway, what can I do for the humble liaison of the minute folk of the humble wood? Hello. Well, we're actually, I was trying to do some research and I figured that the one place I could get some of this knowledge would probably be here and of course, of course. I actually wanted to know your own personal reasons because it actually comes to be that I am very, very well connected with the council itself in Alderheart, and they have kept me pretty up to date with the goings on of your group. And so, of course, all of you are welcome as humble heroes here in my atrium. Um, I just, a game of telephone, as the kids are calling it these days. <laughs> I haven't the faintest idea why. I find think it's slang. Anywho, oh, oh, I made a funny. <laughs> I politely oh. laugh. I'm just like just rolling funny. my eyes. Uh. <laughs> of course. Thank you for your hospitality. Of course, of course, of course. Uh, as you, uh, get a little ahead of myself. As such, of course, all of the resources of my AVM at your disposal. All of you, in fact. That's, that's you very, find very much. Um. However, of course, and of course the Birdfoot Council has informed me of the creature that you found in the Scorched Grove. Now, you won't find information on something that old and powerful in just any library. Uh, thankfully, the Avium was built upon the greatest store of knowledge in all of Humblewood. Literally. <laughs> beneath, the uh, beneath the main building here is the oldest structure, a library, with a collection of tomes, folios, and manuscripts uh, gathered from all over Everden. And with any luck, that's where you'll find what you're looking for. Now, a, a disclaimer. Some of the tomes are in there are a little... Uh, they're, uh, deadly. They're deadly. But worry not. I, uh, the librarians are experts. They'll help you point in the right direction while steering you clear of the more... Uh, <laughs> Advanced materials. Is one of the librarians named Wu Tong by chance a strig? Might know him. <laughs> um, Professor Birchwalker. <laughs> I don't suppose you've had a query with Professor Tong here in the past few weeks. Oh no. <laughs> no. He's on vacation in Northern Humblewood at the moment. Something about an excavation. Oh yes, quite right. Well, anyway, <clears throat> anyway, his class is being taught by one of our other wonderful professors here, and I'm sure, of course, while you're here in the avium, here, I'm getting ahead of myself again. <coughs> right. Can I deduce what he might be suffering or ailing from? Yeah. Make a medicine check, especially with disadvantage, because you're also not like examining him. You're just like okay. from a distance, like yeah. mm -hmm. trying to web him. D it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not great. Uh, ooh, I got a plus zero to my check, so it's a big bad four. <laughs> <laughs> He's nice. probably suffering from sick. <laughs> I'm aware of this. <laughs> I've heard of this. He is suffering uh, from yes. sick. <laughs> I've heard of this. Sick. Sick. That's Looking sick. around at all the magical stuff and all the people and all the things, I, I, I'll i turn to Rooker and just sort of be like, I don't know about you, buddy, but I feel very out of my element. Mm -hmm. I'm a little bit of a fish out of water here too, buddy. Don't worry. <sighs> While you are here in the avium, of course, here's these, he has these little wooden badges, these little coins you can keep on your person with the avium crest on it. Um, he hands them out to all of you. While you are here, you are free to do anything the avium might allow for you. Uh, I understand our, our humble liaison, the minute members of the Humblewood, is very well versed in manners of the arcane. And so, of course, there are all manner of books and spells for you to attempt at your leisure as well as any of you who Thank are also you. well versed in the arcane um while you are here also you may um i don't know if any of you are proficient in the art of alchemy or herbalism 
practice your skills no, there. Early. The library, of course, is welcome for you. We have our wonderful secretary down there. And most notably, if you have the time, we are currently in our, one of our first semesters of the season. And you are welcome to attend any classes that you so might want to enjoy. <sighs> That's very generous. Thank you. Of very course. kind of you. Anything for the heroes of Humblewood. In fact, our first few, because first round of classes are starting here in the next couple hours or so. If that does interest you. Do you have an itinerary? Um, I do not have an itinerary as yet, but you will be able to find yourselves around. Uh, there's plenty of signs. Um, we try and keep ourselves very um, open here. That's very nice. I think so as well. <laughs> <coughs> Are you okay? <coughs> Just a horrid cough. I'm starting to think it's... <laughs> <coughs> Apologies, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Ooh, but we also have already set up uh, a pair. <laughs> <laughs> Beautifully timed. <laughs> Thank you for your hospitality. Shots I just took. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> oh. Oh, um, but once again, oh. he um he puts his little handkerchief away. Just a horrid cough. I've had it for a few years now. It's nothing. I've seen an herbalist. They say I have a case of the um bird flu, which I'm pretty sure is just the flu. Heard of that? Well, I hope you get better soon. Oh, me as well. I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> but of course, we also have. You are welcome to any meals that you might require in our cafeteria, which is edible. And you might also be interested in the. Uh, we have set up a dorm for you, perfect amount of beds for you, with the space that we could spare. You will not want for many things here. You are very generous. Thank you. Of yes, course. Thank you. Thank you. As the dean of this institution, I think it is my very most uh, duty to the citizens of the Humblewood that the knowledge that we possess might be used to better help them. And I hope this is finally time we can deliver on that promise. Do I trust what he's saying is completely true? It's super cheesy, but you can make an insight check. <laughs> <laughs> I got also do. Can I can I also get in yeah. on that? Uh, let me see. Also, do I notice that Rooker is uncomfy? Maybe. I rolled a 16. 16? He seems Seriously. pretty earnest. He seems cheesy as fuck, but he also seems pretty earnest. Okay, fair enough. Seven mine was a 17 for insight, so same. Probably same he, thing. he seems pretty earnest, yeah. but he also seems like a giant cheese ball. Cool. All right. You know that joke? Road work, road work ahead. I sure hope it does. I sure eh? hope it does. Oh, yeah, that guy. <laughs> that guy. He's that guy. Uh, gotcha. And I got the okay. professor's name wrong. I tried making a joke and I burned it. Wong Shi Tong is what I was trying to. Uh, <laughs> That's what I was I trying understood. to say. It translated. It translated. Yeah, yeah. I, I got you. Got I, and then I'm like, oh no, that was wrong. But yeah, I'm like, okay, underground library strig. Hmm. <laughs> Um, just looking for classes. Is it all just arcane based stuff at the, at the avium or do they have, is it like, is that just one of its more famous departments? Like, do they have a, like a music department? They do. <laughs> they have a music department. I'm going to go, oh, audit, I'm going to go it's audit it. Cool. I'm going to go it's audit a, a music class. You, okay, okay, you. okay, 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 okay. Right. I kind of want to audit an alchemy class. Like, Rigger's actually legitimately interested in alchemy, making well, potions and shit. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> excited. And, yeah, and then we're going to go to the cafeteria and talk about our first classes. And then we're going to go to the bookstore and get some letter jackets and hats. And oh then. Oh my god, I'm stuck in AP Calc. Toga. 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 Anyway, so what do the lot of you want to do? Kill State on Friday. The library. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you want to go down to the library, Nifty. You don't want to check out any classes. 
Uh, no, not yet. What's okay. most important to help the humble wood <laughs> okay. is to research. She's First making a good noodle. Business. Getting the fuck out of here. Yeah, yeah. on our way out. We'll, we'll, we'll go talk to the secretary. Yeah, on our way yeah. out, if I, if I notice that Rooker is un-fucking comfy up here, he is, is he trying uh, to hide it? I, he was probably trying to hide it, like, in the room, and then, like, once we leave, I don't think any amount of deception would be able uh, to hide it. He'd like, play, huge, like, just, just like, <sighs> you know, just... No, like, like, in the room, like, I could probably roll deception to try and put up a front, but, like, once we're out there, like, on the platforms, he would just kind of stick to the back, and I don't think any, any form of rolling deception would, uh, would be enough to like, hide that he's Rooker? very and cozy. Rooker, are you alright? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, pretty much. Yeah. I was just gonna whisper, hey, are you okay? Like, just, like, kind of low, just, you know, not out from there, just, are you, are you okay, Rooker? You look a little, can your feathers look pale? Ah! He doesn't even answer. Like, he is concentrating on something so hard. Yeah, I'm gonna keep answer you. eyes forward, just be like, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, don't, don't worry about him, He's, he'll be right. As soon as we can get out of here. All right. Just press the elevator button more, even though it doesn't really make it go faster. <laughs> like, yeah. Professor Birch, uh, <laughs> Professor Birch Walker lets you down. Uh, just, and motions for you to, like, go to, like, motions, like, so there's like classes, this is, where, like, explains kind of where everything is. Because much like um, Alderheart, this place does have, like, its own floors and everything. She brings you to the, um, down to the dormitories, which is like the central building. You have to go mm -hmm. up higher mm -hmm. to get to like the classrooms, the terrariums and everything. Um, and then going down in like the base, like in the basement of this fucking tree is the library. Uh, I will be going down. Cool. <clears throat> Rooker wanted to find an alchemy class? Yeah. Okay. Although, like, once we're, like, down at, like, level, and, like, you will see that he physically, physically relaxes, and then he'll look over and be like, Sorry, did you say something? <laughs> Ricker's gonna look for Alchemy 101. I just give him a nice pat. Okay, just as long as you're okay, you zoned out there for a bit. Have me worried. Um, yeah, I zone out. It's, uh, don't worry about it. Thing. I will say, Baldrick, you've never seen, you don't, you don't, even you've never seen Rooker like that. Ooh, ooh. I will say that even you've never seen Rooker, like, look that uncomfortable. Can I roll for bullshit okay. to see if he's really playing it off, or is he really okay? Intrigue, intrigue. Yeah, you can roll for bullshit. Rooker, roll for deception or persuasion and tell me which. I will look at him concerned, but then just sort of be like, well, he's my bro, so what, you know, if he says he's fine, I guess I'll trust him. Natural one on that check. Oof. So it's even hard <laughs> to tell at this moment. You're a little too just like for me. Is I mean, he learning. said so. <laughs> That's be okay. Okay. Up here, sure. Okay. You will only have to go up it's one fine. floor to find yourself to most of the lecture halls. You don't have to go to like up to the terrariums for this. Good. 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 There's, <laughs> there's not with it. Um. Cool, to cool. any. Did anyone else um, want to go find some learning? Soren wanted to find a music class, but Baldrick wants to see if there's like a PE kind of thing, like a like a so I can like test like do they have a gym or like a place to test martial arts or yeah. anything that might help him either become more finessed with his strength or just to keep up his 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 you muscles. You would be most pop. interested in something that the terrariums can hold. Professor Birch Walker gives you. They're, the terrariums themselves are used typically for like magical practice and are like Ooh. shielded so that like shit doesn't get out or get in. Mm -hmm. That's typically where like a lot of explosives happen. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but if there's anything physical going on, it's there. They have All like right. different biomes and stuff. I'll see you in the cafeteria later. Bye, guys. <laughs> Winter? 
Um, yeah, I want to ask, like, say, I, I can, I'm not as, as talented and adept as, as our dear, uh, liaison, um, Niffy here, but, um, I, I do know a little bit of magic, but I get that from, like, a, a kind of, like, a musical thing. Is there anything that might, uh, uh, be beneficiary there. Well, we do have any host of music classes. Our tree singing classes, uh, our wood singing class has been very, um, has started up this semester, which could be interesting. Um, you're free to test any of those, especially as on here is such a concert as you are. Yeah, I'll check those out. It's the same sort know. of magic that tenders use to create tree, uh, buildings such as Alder Heart and sing things into shape. Oh. Yes, I'm very much. That, that would be very interesting. Yes, I'll check that out. Thank you. Yes. Right this way. Points in the right direction. All right. So, Niffy knows where she's going because there's not much to fuck up. The rest of you are going to need to make a perception check. Okay. Just to see if you I'm find a class that's super close to home to what you're looking for. Okay. Although, um,. Winter, you don't, because you were literally pointed to a class. Perfect. Okay, cool. Awesome. But the other two were just investigating shit. Okay. Nope. Nine. Nine. Okay. And I rolled. What'd you roll? Natural one. <laughs> you find yourself going up. Uh, just one level, of course. You're not a crazy person. <laughs> Uh, you find your way into into this room. It's a pretty open room. Pretty um, a lot of like desks and chairs and things you normally expect from a classroom. This professor walks in. It seems to be a gallus, pretty regal with like the comb, like slicked back and glasses, academic attire, and he writes. Hot professor. It's a chicken, so I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Um, he introduces oh himself as Professor Hitchcock. Yeah, Professor Bugock? Professor Bugock! <laughs> Professor Big... Okay, never mind. Writes, oh, on, writes on the board in shock. <laughs> Where was this from? Uh, professor again? So, <laughs> we're gonna calm down. But there, but y'all I, have, I say, I say, do y'all have the syllabus? No. <laughs> pretty, like, pretty stuff together, just like, <laughs> welcome all of you. And writes in chalk <laughs> to oh, no. test tutelary biography and nesting ergonomics 101. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> no. Test tutelary biology and nesting ergonomics 101. Oh, is he, cool. is he sitting far enough back away from the I'm door where he can't sneak, sneak out without in. being noticed? It, you That's notice true. that it's kind of it's difficult it. to sneak in when you have like all of the students start to pile through. <laughs> this oh. is your now. This is your. This is. You're going to your find the perfect time. Wait a second. <laughs> yeah, is this I'm a just, class I'm just trying to sneak out mating? This is gender and sexuality, but for Birdfall. <laughs> no, to your horror, no, it's not. Oh, no. Today we are going to discuss the cloaca. <laughs> <laughs> I could roleplay this all out, but I'm not going to. I'm just kidding, I will. No. <laughs> this, uh, okay. the pr Professor Hitchcock draws all these things on, like, the board in chalk. And, like, that's a circle. That has four legs. That's a turtle. In which they start graphically describing the uh, biology of testudines. Turtles. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. Oh. And very early on in the class, you are introduced oh. with an acorn. Oh, God. It is given to each and every one of you. Even you before you're able to sneak your way out because there's so much like okay. attention put on you. It's like uh -huh. this for all intents and purposes in your class no. is your baby. Oh no. Oh, no. No. Oh. No. oh yep, knew it. No. It's sexist. 
basic. But for a turtle. Health for class. Goodness. But That's for a turtle. <laughs> Just bury it somewhere. <laughs> You're a bird. Honestly. <laughs> oh my god. Um, and you do have like a student as they start whooping out the acorns. It's this Mapak dude who's like wearing this uh this, this long clothes, like go kind of like the hoodie uh -huh. thing. And looks at the acorns in shock. <laughs> and he just kind of like looks a little kind of leans over to you and just asks. I didn't sign up for this. What's your major? So, I'm not actually a, a, a student here. I'm here on research, but not for this. Okay. <laughs> and they put the acorn down. It's the, it's bigger than your head. <laughs> Jesus fuck. It is okay. a large acorn. Goddamn. You and you hear like an audible gulp <laughs> from your papak oh, friend next to you. You have a classmate, buddy. I don't know I'm, about you, but I'm worst. gonna try and get out of here. I'm gonna try and sneak out of here. Now everyone will be grouped up into pairs. Whoever you're sitting next to, to your right it's will funny be your you partner. That. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually literally the next thing I was going to discuss. Son of a bitch! <laughs> That's what you get when you roll a wife. Oh, that was no. literally what I was about to say. <laughs> Do it. Yes. Yes. No. Of course, for all of this, I'm going to need in order to dis in order to discuss the traditional heteronormative family dynamic. For at least this class, I will need you each to pair up into groups. Gender does not matter. It only matters that there are at least two, so that you might begin to learn cooperation. And the general things that go into raising a little baby, baby, in the animal <laughs> kingdom. And the park this. looks and is very scared. <laughs> we, should, we should go. We should this go. This is a nightmare. Let's go. Let's get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> he. Make a stealth check. Okay. I'm not using that. Oh my please, god. Please, Rooker. Please. Please fail. Oh, I... Okay. That is uh, plus stealth. Holy shit. Got natural uh... 20. Wait, is that a He's got a natural one. No, we got a natural 20. Poor buddy. Oh, 20. I used the oh, okay, that's a 24. That's a 24. Okay, okay. Oh, you nice. both bolt out of there and manage to get the door open and like the same breath as standing up. <laughs> you, uh, both you and your Mapak friend, like, leave so fast, you swear the acorn was spinning. <laughs> <laughs> he leans like back against the door. <sighs> My advisor's gonna be so pissed at me. Good luck. <laughs> you too, uh... I didn't catch your name. Give it. But, uh, Rooker. You can call me Rooker. Cool. Um. Fuck! Oh, no. Bye! She had a class. She had a class. <laughs> she she dropped class. class. No, I just. Yeah, it was. And she's happy there. That was really unexpected. She um, dropped out of happened. Uh. He introduced himself as Taylor. Baldrick! <laughs> You're familiar with the woods. The woods seem like a normal place, so you go to somewhere different. You go to a desert biome, one of the terrariums that's literally full of sand and dunes and little, like, ruins. And you walk in. I need you to make an athletics check. Okay, oh, jeez. A dexterity oh, saving throw. I lied. Oh, okay. Pretty good. Uh, 21. You spend your few minutes dodging fireballs as a bunch of the magic students sit in the upper echelons of the terrarium and do their best to outdo each other. It seems you've come on the day where there was a moving target practice planned. Except no one stops to question whether or not you were the moving target. And they just assumed. <laughs> Luckily, because of your role, you don't actually take damage, but you spent a lot of it in fear. 
<laughs> hey, that's pretty accurate to what we're gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to. I'm gonna shout out. It's like, I'm a real person. <sighs> Wait. <laughs> Little shits. Um, actually, let's let's do what let's do one more. Let's do, I'm I'm gonna start over here. Actually, let's yeah, let's do another one. Fuck! I'm students. You see this one professor with a fucking oh. sword oh, raised no. up. Pow! And you see like all manner of fire bolts, <laughs> fire bolts, ice bolts, various other kinds of magic explode around you as you duck and dodge and weave. And <laughs> like, this is impossible shit. Oh you my know what? god. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you something later. Ooh. Oh shit. <laughs> as for winter. It takes you a little bit. You actually find yourself a little bit delayed getting to the class. It seems this, especially the upper echelons of where you would be going, are catered towards the bird folk who can glide around with ease. But with the way like the branches move and the platforms, missing one is what decides you getting the class on time and missing. Lovely. <laughs> but you Sounds do great. find your way to wood singing 101. <clears throat> it is this very nicely lit room. Um, pieces of bark um, kind of grow through the floor and into the ceiling. And a lot of the trees and the pieces of wood here are shaped, oddly. Like little bubbles form, little curves and others. Very unnatural. <laughs> and you even see one that's been like exploded in the corner. And you see all these people like talking. Um, you see this vulpin that catches your eye kind of with like at gray fur mm -hmm. this like little cloak that has a hood mm -hmm. um as well as uh well, well we'll get to that there's a few open seats slip into one the professor has already carved out different like notes it seems like you are angling for a um a sort like getting a tree to move in a very particular way to form left and as so a few notes are drawn on the board along with like the words like intent and purpose um you are the teacher uh this um mapak female um walks around uh remember everyone you are asking permission you are not forcing it. You are not trying to bend the trees to your will like some sort of crazed lunatic. You are trying to get the earth to work with you. <clears throat> and you hear this Poof! from the other side of the class as someone like accidentally like goes sharp and the tree <laughs> does not like it. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Um, and taking your seat, you have like your own like a piece of wood that's like grown like kind of into the center of the place. And you see that Vulpin that caught your eye earlier, um, reading over some of his notes and uh, this little gerbean sitting next to him with large rabbit ears. Um, and it's kind of like the only real seat that you see available next to them. Yeah. Okay. Sit down. Oh. Uh, the vulpin looks at you and is like, curious. The gerbean um, touches like the wood and then notices you. And there is a shock of realization here. Is that Peter? It's Peter. <gasps> Fuck. Peter. And that is where we're going to stop for tonight. No. Oh. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> He's Peter Not again. 
Fever. No doubt our few, uh, it is a short session tonight and I apologize, Traveler. But um, unfortunately, sometimes that is what must be done. No doubt our adventurers are set on a bit of a different path. Um, some old flames come to light. Other passions are discovered and evolved. And endless possibilities await in these halls. Until next time, traveler. May the wind sing your songs. May the trees shade your brow. And may the road itself remain ever faithful and true.